I went to Marquette University to speak about leftist indoctrination, and after I'd finished speaking, I took a sip of my water, and I sort of had this moment of content reflection where I was thinking, you know, wow, I'm really glad we could all come together and listen to each other's ideas peacefully. And then one of the organizers comes up to me, he's like, yo, did you see the cops arrest the Antifa guy who brought a bunch of knives? And I was like, bruh. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, Kami. The tour is over. I've survived. Thank you to everyone that showed up. It was very epic. It was great to meet you guys. Everyone I met was very high IQ, very good energy all around. Did a lot of tea posing. It was a good time, even though I almost like died or whatever. But, you know, big shout out to guys like Tristan, Michael, Brennan. These guys making it possible by supporting us over at heckoffcommy.com. Very epic, very high IQ individuals. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go through both of the articles that were published in the local paper. We'll talk about the protest. We'll talk about Antifa. We'll talk about both of their strategies for silencing conservatives and why they do it. And we'll talk about how I handled it and how it should be handled since this will happen to all of us at some point. So... The first article doesn't mention the arrest that was made, but it gives a decent summary of what happened. And so we'll go through that one first. And it starts off with a quote, but first you have to notice the picture that's included with the article. That picture was taken outside of the lecture hall after I was told that I had a protest because I was in there and I was talking to some fans. And then one of the organizers came up to me and he was like, hey, you know, you've got a protest out there. And I was so excited to be being protested. I was like, really? I have a protest? He was like, yeah, they printed out a bunch of your old tweets and they're passing them out to people. And so, you know, I ran out there to go talk to them because I've always wanted to be canceled or whatever. I've always wanted to just be confronted with everything that I've ever said just so that I could unapologetically stand by virtually all of it. And so, I went out there and there's over a dozen people protesting me and I was so excited that I sort of forgot that we're supposed to be adversaries and so I was just like hey you guys like what's up and you know I just started asking them about their signs and about what our disagreements were and so this is where this quote comes into play and it reads would you say that all trans people are mentally ill then Zelda Kaiser a sophomore in the College of Arts and Sciences asked John Doyle a conservative youtuber he replied in the affirmative and that's exactly what happened this person asked me if I believe that transgender people have mental disorders now keep in mind they had gone through my entire channel. They had combed through my tweets. They were all very well aware of what I believe. So the reason that they were asking me this question is simply because it's a tough question to answer, right? Like, I mean, it's me versus about 15 people all hostile towards me, all staring at me. And so what they're trying to do is get me to flinch. They're trying to get me to paraphrase my beliefs to avoid the conflict. And that's not something that I'm willing to do. It's not something that I've ever been willing to do. And it's not something that we can do as a movement because when you do that, you look weak and you look uncertain. So it makes our side I look bad as a result. And so I replied something to the effect of, well, depending on which DSM you cite, you can find extensive documentation for uh, gender identity disorder or gender dysphoria being classified as a mental disorder. And the only reason that they reclassified it from GID to gender dysphoria is because of the political backlash from the LGBT activists. So yes, it's a mental disorder. And then this person asked me a follow-up question same style, trying to get me to flinch. They're like, well, I'm transgender. Do you think that I have a mental illness? And now let's think about what I just said. I just said that transgender people have a mental illness. That logically dictates that if you are transgender, you have a mental illness, according to the description that I just laid out, which is substantiated by the psychological literature. So this person's question has already been answered, which, you know, it makes you wonder, okay, well then why are they asking this question? Same reason. They're thinking maybe he's okay with saying it's a mental illness, but I bet he'll flinch if I ask him to apply it to me personally, which granted is a lot harder to do. But again, we cannot show any sign of weakness. And so I replied, yes, if you are transgender, you are suffering from a mental illness. However, when I say mental illness, I don't say that to disparage you. I don't say that to insult you. And I encourage my audience, which I do, to do the same. You know, when we say that transgender people are mentally ill, we're not trying to insult them. We're acknowledging the reality of the situation, which is important if you're trying to help these people. That's, in my opinion, the best way to answer those types of questions because, you know, it doesn't have to be word for word, but you have to stand by your beliefs without allowing them to paint you as a hateful figure because the reason that they're asking you those questions isn't because they personally care or because they're personally interested in your answer. No, they're trying to discredit you to other people by making you look like a bad person because they know that they will never listen to you, but they can't be sure that other people won't listen to you. So they have to try to undermine your credibility with attacks like these. But that being said, you can undermine your own credibility if you compromise your beliefs. So never do that. 
Never compromise your beliefs for anyone or for anything. Ne you look these people in the eye and you stand your ground. And again, be sure to clarify that you're acting in good faith and that you don't harbor any ill will towards these people, which you shouldn't. And if you do, you should excuse yourself because they want to conflate our beliefs with hatred to discredit them. So it's your job to reaffirm that the overlap between what we believe and genuine hatred is completely manufactured. It does not exist. It's just a leftist tactic to discredit us. And unfortunately, it's effective. So we have to be on our A game. But Anyways, the article goes on to talk about me a little bit, what I was discussing during the lecture. They talk about YAF, which is the organization that hosted me, so big thanks to YAF for that. Uh, and then it gets into my controversial past. It says, the demonstrators handed out printed tweets from Doyle's Twitter account and screenshots from his YouTube channel that Corey Forbes, a first-year student in the College of Arts and Sciences and a protest organizer, said they took offense to. They include one of my offensive tweets, which, which was, quote, fact check, everyone who experiences menstruation is indeed a woman, trans men are not men, non-binary people are actually part of the binary mainstreaming delusion is unhealthy and dangerous a October tweet by Doyle and printed by demonstrators read the tweet was quoted in response to a tweet stating that not everybody who experiences menstruation is a woman so just to go over this again they printed out this tweet among many others because they deemed it to be offensive and then later they say that because of this tweet because of my mere presence on campus they felt less safe never mind that my life was implicitly threatened by one of their parties who brought weapons to the event and had to be removed by police as we'll discuss in a second it was me simply stating facts in succession that actually impacted their perceived safety i said that everyone who experiences menstruation is a woman that is a fact i said that trans men are not men that is a fact i said that non-binary people are actually part of the binary that is a fact and i finished by saying that mainstreaming delusion is unhealthy and dangerous that is you guessed it a fact delusion by definition is believing something that contradicts reality if you are a man but you believe that you're a woman or vice versa you are by definition delusional and given that the suicide rates amongst transgender people stay constant or even increase after they've had hormone therapy or reassignment surgeries, I'm correct in stating that it is dangerous to promote this. And if you disagree with that, you are either delusional or you don't care about the well-being of trans people. And now I'll read you the part uh, that they included about my response to the protesters. It says, quote, Doyle said he was excited to see the protesters. Very true. It means that what I'm doing is effective in reaching people, prompting the opposing side to take action, Doyle said in an email. I generally enjoy seeing people taking action for the things in which they believe. The speaker added that he felt the demonstrators were respectful. I respect the demonstrators for attending the event without disruption and staying to ask their questions at the end, Doyle said in an email. I truly believe that they're acting in good faith despite our differences, and I'd hope that they'd extend me the same confidence. What a nerd. We pick on him. He's a good guy, though. And that's true, you know. And so the article concludes with this guy talking about how he contacted a bunch of the university faculty to try and get me shut down. And the university actually held their ground. Yaf held their ground. So that's pretty epic. We appreciate that. And so this guy ended up throwing a tantrum and tearing down the signs advertising the event. And then he threw a crumbled up one at one of the Yaf kids and ended up getting a ticket from the MUPD for that. So a bit of a low IQ moment, a bit of a rage quit. But uh, we'll go through the other article now, which is just as interesting, if not more interesting. And so this article is entitled Individual Arrested in Were Chemistry Lobby, or however you pronounce it. And it reads, quote, A Marquette student was arrested for disorderly conduct while armed in the chemistry lobby at approximately 7.15 p.m. November 12th, Marquette University Police Department Assistant Chief Jeff Kranz said. Goes on to say, quote, MUPD arrested the student following a report from another student saying that they saw an individual wearing a mask and carrying two knives at a YAF event in the chemistry place. Kranz said the event featured John Doyle, a conservative YouTuber. It was a bandana style face covering, so it covered the student's nose and mouth. This person said who attended the event as a protester. Very epic. Marquette does not condone nor tolerate acts of intimidation in any form and expects our students to uphold our values at all times. The university prohibits the possession of weapons in campus buildings and takes the safety and security of our campus community, that includes me, extremely seriously university spokesperson this guy said now the reason that this is important is because this individual was wearing the mask they had the antifa set up they had the look going and they were also brandishing two knives and we've seen what antifa likes to do to people like us they like to hide behind their masks like cowards and they like to assault and attempt to murder people with whom they disagree politically we've seen it with bricks we've seen it with the cement uh bike locks knives all sorts of stuff and who knows what could have happened like seriously if the police hadn't been there if no one had spoken up, who knows what would have happened? Nobody who hides their face with a mask and brandishes knives at a speaking event has good intentions. And I can't say for sure whether or not they were going to hurt me, but to be honest, I don't really care. 
not because like I want to be hurt, but it's like, you know, if you're going to try and kill me for exercising my first amendment, I'm just going to hop over to the subsequent amendment and we'll take care of that. But at the very least, they were trying to intimidate me, but more importantly, they were trying to intimidate you. They know that I don't care, but more importantly, they know that I'm getting emails every day. I'm getting messages every day from people that say stuff like, Hey man, you know, you inspired me to, to speak up for what I believe in. Hey man, I used to be a liberal, but you changed my mind on XYZ, stuff like that. I get it every day. And this isn't to say, oh, look at me, I'm so big and important, they want to take me out. No, 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 it has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with you. The reason they want to shut me down is because I'm inspiring people like you to speak out and I'm bringing people to our side. But without you guys, without those people, I'm just one person, I'm insignificant. The same way that they tried to shut down the people who have inspired me because they're afraid of us rising up. They're afraid of the numbers. And when you're inspired and you rise up, guess what happens? You inspire other people to do the same. And that's why it's so important. And that's why they want to intimidate us. They want us to be afraid afraid to wear our MAGA hats in public. They want us to be afraid to say what we believe in public. For whatever reason, some are more extreme than others. Maybe they'll just call you a racist or maybe they'll split your head open with a crowbar. It's all the same principle, which is that the left wants to silence you because the more you speak your mind, the more traction your ideas will get because you have the truth on your side. Do you really think it's a coincidence that the side of the aisle whose ideas have led to the deaths of tens of millions of people throughout the last century, you really think it's a coincidence that they don't want to discuss their ideas, that they just want to shut you down? And even worse, when you don't allow them to shut you down, you inspire others to do the same, which just makes them want to take you down even more. But here's the good news. They can't touch you. They might insult you. They might try to get you fired. They might even put you in the hospital, frankly. But the only way that they can ever stop you is if you submit to them. The only way that you can ever be stopped is if you bow to them and submit. If you lower your head and say, yes, I will compromise my beliefs. Even if they kill you, God forbid, now you're a martyr and you will be remembered as someone who died defending the truth and your legacy will inspire many, many others to act as you did. Now, obviously, the likelihood of you being hospitalized or even dying is incredibly, incredibly low. But the point is that these people will go to almost any lengths to silence you because the only way that they can win is if you don't fight back. So the bad news is that they're going to slander you. They're going to dox you. They're going to try everything that they can. But the good news is that if you just stand your ground, you look them in the eye showing no sign of weakness, no sign of hesitation, you have the truth on your side and you have God on your side, whether you believe in him or not. In the end, you will win because when good men act, truth and justice will prevail. Hey guys, if you like this video, thumbs up, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications. Very epic. That's the, that's the four point checklist. Um, we're making some heck off comedy Christmas sweaters. They're going to be pretty cool. I think we're only going to make a few dozen of them and we're going to give them away randomly to people that are subscribed over at heckoffcomedy.com. So pretty epic. Very cool. We're going to advertise that a bit more once we uh, get the ball rolling a little bit. So thank you so much for watching. May God bless America. Poof. Missed. Poof. There we go. Very epic.